Our lowly Chevrolet Bolt is a 2017 top-end model. It's got nearly 140,000 miles on the clock, and it's completely paid off. We're not paying any loans, any lease agreements. It's our vehicle. And at least according to CarMax and some of the other folks locally, it's probably worth about six or $7,000 as a trade-in, and on the used market, well, maybe closer to eight or 9,000 US dollars. It's great for a runabout, it's small, it's convenient. And while there are other vehicles on the market with far more capabilities, we found ways over the years to upgrade this car's capabilities. Tesla has full self-driving, this car has comma. Admittedly, comma doesn't officially support it, but we're running Frog Pilot right now and Rumours are that Sunny Pilot is soon going to get Chevrolet Bolt EV support. So this car has auto steer, and it's got distance following cruise control, and you can take your hands off on the highway if you feel so inclined. But charging this car has never been great, at least from a DC fast charger. It's got a maximum theoretical charging input of about 55 kilowatts DC, and well, it's a bit of a hit and miss when it comes to networks like Electrify America as to whether it will actually charge or not. But earlier this week, in fact, just yesterday, GM announced it's officially now got the ability to use Tesla superchargers. And if you want to have a, an adapter for your GM vehicle, whether it's one of the new vehicles that's currently in production or a Chevrolet Bolt EV, you can do that. You can buy one. It's about 200 and 25 US dollars, you have free shipping until the end of the year. But as I've learned from other people who have these Nax to CCS adapters, it's basically the same adapter for all brands. And I'm at a Tesla supercharger. Let's see if this works. In order to get the charging session to actually work, you're going to need a couple of things. First, you're going to need a cell phone with the appropriate GM app for whatever vehicle you have. If you have one of the newest EVs from GM, whether it's an Equinox EV, whether it's a Blazer, whether it's a Hummer EV, you will have an infotainment system that will allow you to start and stop charging from inside the vehicle. If you have a Chevrolet Bolt, an, an original first generation one, you will need this app. I don't believe you can start charging from within the car. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to public charging. All right, and then you're going to go to Tesla Supercharger and you have to uh, tell it to charge by app. Now it gives you the option to offer uh, a Tesla Supercharger NAX adapter online. We already have one. So we're just gonna go and go to the map here. This is the Supercharger right here. It says, uh, you can charge there. So you tell it, I would like to charge here, charge here. It tells, tells you the available stalls. So we're at one B and then it tells us to connect the next DC adapter and plug in and then tap on charging. GM will sell you one of these for $225, but it's actually the same regardless of if you have a Rivian or you have a Ford or anything like that. If you've bought the official Tesla sanctioned adapter, it will look like this. And as with all adapters, you should plug the adapter into the charging station before you plug the charging station into your car. Obviously the advantage with the Bolt is that you can just about reach in terms of charge cord. And then what you need to do is that you need to go to your app where it is charging and you're going to tell it that, yes, I'd like to start charging. You hit the app button, you tell it to hit charging. It says connecting to charger. And then hopefully in about, uh, yeah, sometime between 10 and 30 seconds, it will connect to the charger. It will tell the charger, hey, I want you to start charging. And you'll hear some clicks and some clunks from the car and from the charging station and your charging session will begin. And there you go, we've got that little uh, orange sign on the uh, car to say the charger is plugged in. Then we heard a from the charge connector. And then if you look, it will start flashing green. There was the beep. 
and it will start flashing green. Now on the app, in a second, once it's successfully connected to the charger, it will start telling you how much you are spending on your charge and you can go from there. The important thing to note here is that while this is something you can do, using a Tesla supercharger is still gonna be more expensive than many other charging options out there. Certainly in this area, I know that using uh, some other local DC fast chargers is actually a lot cheaper than using a Tesla supercharger. Other people will have issues giving money to Tesla and by association, Elon Musk. I personally won't be using this unless it's an emergency. And then yes, obviously any charging station in a storm kind of, of thing. You may think differently and we're each allowed to have our opinions on that. So I'm not expecting anyone to, to agree or disagree with me. It is what it is, but it is convenient and we can't argue that obviously buying one of these adapters it's going to take a while for those adapters to arrive i just happen to have a ford adapter so if you have a rivian adapter or you already have an adapter you can rock up and start using this today should you buy something like an a to zero of another alternative well that's up to you officially you're not supposed to use unsupported uh, uh, adapters on the charging network and so you know, that is a choice that you can make. Uh, I've used the A to Z adapter before uh, with our F-150 Lightning and had no issues. So we've got a couple of those back at home. We have a couple of the Ford adapters as well. So I'll probably leave one of the Ford adapters in the bolt so that we can use that. Now, if you are a 2019 to 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EV owner, you can't just rock up and use this. I kind of find it ironic that as a 2017 original production year Bolt EV owner, I can literally just rock up, plug in after I've signed up and I can start charging. It's still charging right now. That is easy for me to do and there's no requirements for, for over the air updates or even in visit, uh, in person visit updates. But if you have a 2019 to 2020 Bolt EV, you will have to make an appointment with your local Chevrolet dealership to go and get a software update for your vehicle, which I believe should be free of charge if you want to use the Tesla supercharger network. Not everybody's going to want to, as I, as I just previously said. So that's a, that's a you problem. That's an up to you problem. Um, but if you have a 2017 or a 2018 or you have a 21, 22 Bolt or Bolt EUV, this should automatically now just work as long as you have an adapter. But there are some vehicles that are left out in the cold. As far as I am aware, and I would love to know if I'm wrong here, but as far as I'm aware, the Chevrolet Spark EV, if you have a CCS enabled Chevrolet Spark EV, which has a very limited range battery pack, you are not included in this. Now I hope that I'm proven wrong, and I hope that eventually GM will roll out support for that. But as I understand it, there's no plan to include those vehicles on access to this network which is a shame because the Spark EV is the car that needs more charging access just because of its limited range. Anyway, that's how it works. It works perfectly on Orion, our Chevrolet Bolt EV. And to finish the charging, you can do one of two things. You can either go to the app here and uh, I think you can end it. There you go, it tells me uh, DC fast charging, I'm 83% you can tell it to uh, stop charging. So it says, open the charging app and press stop charging. Um, I don't know if you can do that on the center of the car. Let's find out. You can actually turn the car on, obviously. And let's see, so we're gonna go to energy and we're going to charging and we can tell it to stop and it will stop charging. I just heard it stop. And then you unplug it from your vehicle. And of course, you're also gonna to wanna to pull this apart. Put the cable back and off you go. Before I leave though, there is something I do wanna to touch base on. And that is be nice. In order to use this, you're going to have to park in a space 
that a Tesla would not normally park. So right now, I'm actually parked one over. So I'm blocking two Tesla supercharger stalls. So normally the car that would be parked where my bolt is would be using that supercharger and the car that's parked where I'm currently standing would use this one. For that reason, try and use the far most supercharger. Because if you use the far most supercharger, so as you're looking at the bank of superchargers, the one to your furthest right, that will ensure that other people can still access the rest of the supercharger. Uh, I would also advise that while you are supercharging your car, you don't sod off for half an hour. Uh, by, by all means, go, go to the bathroom, go get a coffee, but come back to your car, be nearby, because if there is somebody else who needs to charge, uh, you have a car that charges very, very slowly. The Bolt certainly does. And it's only just polite to be willing and able to move over if someone is in, in a hurry. Just, just be nice, share the charging infrastructure. Um, I think that's probably the best way of doing it. And of course, don't park weirdly unless you absolutely have no other choice. So there you have it, it works. Thank you GM for finally uh, agreeing something with uh, Tesla to get this feature turned on. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna need it, but uh, I know plenty of you will. So you're gonna need one of these and we'll make sure that we put a link in the description. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room, our Patreon page, our YouTube comment section, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help make this channel possible through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, around $10.08 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Bree Crockford, CAP, Christian Balal, Everything on a Buy Bagel, Pidge Eon, and Brett Chandler. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below for Ko-fi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have a good old fashioned PO box you can reach us at, the address for which you'll also find below. And if you're in need of some swag, do check out our swag store in the down below. We've got some fantastic content coming right up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. As a reminder, we make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the almighty algorithm thinks you might enjoy this video, but what does it know? We think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.